Oh, man. Congratulations. This might be the most disappointed I ever feel with Marvel. Ah. Right. Alright, let's just go ahead and get this shit over with. For those that remember my mid-season review around a couple weeks ago, we were doing pretty solid. Nothing groundbreaking, but this wasn't the forgettable mush that Marvel has become, especially in regards to the Disney Plus original. Some say I might truly never recover the brain cells lost from some of those shows, but this, this is even worse. Marvel's Secret Invasion isn't bad. Actually, let me not say that. But it hasn't been the mind-melting diarrhea content factory that has been the Disney Plus originals. But this right here, this is disappointment. And what could damn near be categorized as self-sabotage. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and imagine this scene in your head. Of course we're talking about Marvel Studios, but you could also imagine an instance in your very own life. Things are great. The money is flowing. Confidence at its very peak. Everything seems and it's going right. Then boom, here comes the snag. You don't know what happened, when it happened, but it's here. There's discontent. From your point of view, nothing's changed. Nothing has been done with the formula, but yet there's a divide. Things are no longer going the way you want. The money is no longer flowing. You can feel the confidence dwindling away with each and every action you make. The rumors are beginning to spread and the anxiety is beginning to grow. You know what you're capable of, you've done it before, and damn it, you're gonna do it again. It's time to regain yourself. So in the words of Woody Harrelson's Tallahassee, Time to nut up or shut up. So we put on our big boy pants and you get to work. You can feel it on the end of your fingers with each word that you type, that this is greatness. You're back to form. You know that this is the show to regain the faith, to regain the confidence, to regain the money. Everything is in your favor. A returning fan favorite actor with a solid track record of not signing up for clown activity? Check. An interesting comic book storyline with plenty of stakes that I'm sure Marvel will have no problem with condensing down to six 35 minute episodes? Check. Currently hitting rock bottom with your previous Disney Plus show, so in reality we can only go up from here? Check. All there was to do was reveal the finished product. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> this right here, folks, is disappointment. And not for us, the audience, but for Marvel. You can tell they really tried with this one. Truly cooking. Sheffin, if I may. But man, is it so embarrassing. Because they really thought that they were in the lab. And the worst part is that we know that they just don't give a shit. But unfortunately, I did. For those who are new to the channel, for me, it was about one character. One more character that I still had faith in when it came to the character assassination that has been plaguing the MCU. Nick Fury. A character that I believe was the glue of the MCU. Always keeping the other supporting or main characters in the loop with current events to not make the timeline feel as inconclusive as it seems now. I mean, does Black Cap even know that Shang-Chi exists? Or that there was a big kaiju battle in the middle of Egypt? Or that a floating city that controlled hundreds of thousands of Black Widow assassins and every aspect of the MCU's power structure has been destroyed? Eh, who knows? Who cares? But you're starting to get my point here. Without Nick Fury, the MCU is truly nothing. Just an unorganized landscape of events that just happened and are forgotten in T-minus five seconds. Yep, oop already forgot. But unfortunately, that is no longer the case. Because I'm a dumbass who couldn't pick up on the hints. Most characters in the show couldn't recognize the Nick Fury that I knew. So how could I? And in reality, I couldn't anyway. Because he's nowhere to be found. And if you couldn't tell by now, this isn't really or just simply isn't going to be a review or a linear review type of video. This is a rant. A disappointing rant. A semi-angry rant. So I hope you've seen the show for the context of this video, and if you haven't, I envy you. But as of right now, Marvel's Secret Invasion's finale is rated the worst, the worst of all of the Disney Plus originals. Truly really imagine a group of shows that have been 
riddled with gems in their finales like <laughs> She's holding thousands of people hostage. And it could have been thousands more if she hadn't put up her own quarantine. Different in your genes, like a mutation. The terrorists only set us back a bit. You have to stop calling them terrorists. They'll never know what you sacrificed for them. Man, nothing could have uh, prepared me for the clips I just watched. Some of those were really funny, but God, we have been suffering for a long time. Point is, those clips, those are clown activity. And while yes, I know that Marvel was trying, it was the beginning of the disconnect, the divide, the breakup with audiences. You never really know how bad it is until you do. So when you give that quote unquote last hurrah, that one last push of actual effort to not put shit on a screen, to not only miss the mark, but to come up so comedically short that the only meme that comes to mind that actually embodies and encapsulates the entirety of this rambling, incoherent rant is this. Stop! Stop! He's already dead! When Amelia Clark statements on her role in the MCU and how Disney Studio was the best studio she's ever worked with, much like when Jennifer Lawrence came out and said that there weren't any female-led action heroes before her role as Katniss on The Hunger Games, I personally was very confused. While yes, Game of Thrones shit the bed writing-wise with its last two seasons, and there were some personal issues with the nudity in the earlier seasons that were solved pretty much instantly after the success of season one, but otherwise, the partnership of Amelia Clark's talented acting and portrayal of her character Daenerys, and the writing involved especially in the earlier season, propelled not only the show, but her herself into becoming a household name. And she's smart, she surely knows that, making it pretty understandable why I was confused at the statement as a whole. And then the finale came. Oh. Uh, to make Khaleesi the Avengers is something that I can't and will never understand. What is the point of even continuing the MCU if she can do everything? The power scaling in the MCU has now been fucked, and it's been fucked for a pretty long time, but at this point it's just pretty ridiculous. The ramifications of making your empowered girl boss into the ultimate empowered girl boss is mind-blowingly stupid. And as much as I can rant about this one sole aspect of the finale itself, <sighs> we simply have to move on to what is the greatest disappointment in the entirety of the show. Gravic. It all wraps up into the overarching theme of Marvel at this point in their Disney Plus originals of setting up events and character moments or motivations, but unable to have the ability to produce a proper or in-tune payoff. Gravic is a prime example of that. With the character of Gravic having a personal vendetta against Fury himself, with the inability to deliver on his promise and seemingly condemning his species to a life of hiding, there is no way that there was a cognitive brain cell in the writing room when we gave Gravik the only attention-grabbing monologue in the entirety of the show, an actual display of talent and rangeful acting, and thought to ourselves, but hear me out, let me cook. What if it wasn't Nick Fury? And then he dies to Avenger Khaleesi. <laughs> it's just so painfully bad at this point, just true, utterly tasteless nonsense. And the worst of it all is that just like every other Disney Plus original that isn't WandaVision or Loki, it didn't even matter. Yet again, just another Marvel product post Endgame that has incredibly mind-bending and world-ending states, just to be resolved by the easiest of bullshit events and idealized trailer-filled character moments, all with the added combination of a mostly competent villain throughout the show to end up becoming a comedic mustache twirler has become nothing short of a spectacle when it comes to Marvel. I truly don't know how they do it. At the end of the day, Marvel's Secret Invasion is Marvel's biggest disappointment. And while it might not have been as comedically bad or poorly written or poorly acted as some of the earlier Disney Plus originals, what more is there to say? It's unfortunate because we really tried with this one. And man, did we fall flat on our face. Congratulations, Marvel. I'll see you in November.
Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Of course, comment down below. At this point, I understand that the majority of people have checked out of Marvel. And it's unfortunate because I really and genuinely had faith in Samuel Jackson and the character of Nick Fury to not put on the clown makeup. But look at me. Who's wearing the clown makeup now? Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye!